Welcome to regain control of your design extensions. Oh, hi there. Um, I'm just using the built-in design function, you know, so you can do some more customization because I need budget at date here on my chart of account screen. Uh, perfect. I'm gonna do stop designing. I'm gonna call this uh, greatest of all times extension. Is it all times? All time? I can have greatest of all time. No, I don't care. Uh, and this is uh, this is this is Sunday Hogard. That's the publisher. Yeah. Um. Perfect. So now I made a change and I saved it as extension. Now all my users have this budget at date when they look at the chart of count. Perfect. Perhaps not perfect. Hey, I'm Eric. And um, what I just did there is what customers do. Because it's part of the system that you can go and select the sign and add fields and move stuff around and save it. And um, what, will, what will happen is that, let me switch back to this one, that if I go into extensions, with a D because we are allowed to spell stupid here. Um, we can see that I got an extension here. And uh, I have uh, those two others. One goes called extension one and one's called extension two. And I think there is a very important spell wrong here at the bottom. And you know when 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 a business central has been living in um, in the hands of real customers for a while, this is what you end up with: these um, singular extensions. Um, so some of them might cover multiple pages because you can you can do multiple designs operations in one design session, but you will end up with all these. Uh, extension I, I've seen I, I've seen customers with a lot uh, I'm not gonna put in numbers or names on this but a lot uh, at, at some point this you know the, the just the handling uh, the extension view um, this come becomes problematic so how can how can we how can we improve this? Um, which is basically the theme of, of this video. So, so now I have four extensions here. Um, and what I want to do is basically take these four extensions and merge them into a single one extension and a, an extension that I have on the source control uh, or not necessarily source control, but that I have under my control uh, inside Visual Studio Code. And this is something that everybody can do. Uh, this is something that customers can do. Um, let me show you what I mean. So what I have somewhere else here is Visual Studio Code. I just created a new extension with the AL go uh, command. I connected this extension to my tenant. And in this case, the environment that I'm using is called uh, book. So that's, that's the one I have. Um, so let me show you what we need to do. So in here, back to the extensions. Um, we can take the Sunday one. I click the three dots and I say download source. What I get now is actually the source code of what I, I just did. I did it visually, but the result is saved as source code. Uh, and I think I need to download this one also. So I do download source on that one. I, I already downloaded one and two uh, before the video. Um, so now I have all four downloaded. I get them as a uh, 
as a zip file. Uh, I know this is, unfortunately, I don't have a zip client that's scalable. I don't think we can, we can, let me see if I can do something fancy here and say, wow, that did not work the way we thought it would. Uh, you know what? Let's, uh, <laughs> we'll, keep, we'll, we'll keep that in the video. Let's see how it goes. Anyway, let me, let me just put it that in this zip file, there is a, an AL file. So what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to do this, I'm just going to move this off screen, the zip, put the uh, Vision Studio code back on screen. So now I'm going to extract the one or more AL files that are in my extension. I'm going to extract that into the folder where I just created the new extension. Um, so there's the first one and we can see that this is, this is the one we just did. So this is 50,003, uh, extend chart of accounts, budget at date has been added after, let me actually make this bigger so I'm sure you guys can see it, um, has been added after net chains. The field name is kind of funky and there's some curly blue squiggly lines here, squiggly lines, so, so but we got that one. So I'm just gonna do this for the next one also. So I'm opening in another, another screen and unzipping into this folder. So we got that one. Uh, and I'm gonna do it with the Hogard one we saw before. And I'm gonna do it with the the two also. I'm only extracting the AL files. Let me just see if so in the in this case what we have here is also a app.json that defines that singular extension, but we have our own app.json here. So we don't want to overwrite with this one. Um, there's also a .vs code file that just has a launch.json. We have that in here also. We don't care about that either. The only thing we do care about is the, um, oops, let's see if I can get back in this one, is the AL file. And I, I'm using 7-zip by the way, um, but, but you can basically use whatever you want to handle it. Okay, so we I had four, ex, four extensions. Uh, so now we, you can see that I have four files here. Um, page extension 50,000, 50,001, 50,002, 50,003. Um, and it's all red. And, and the, the first problem you can see up here is the number because as soon as you create a, a app, a JSON file, it will tell you that the, the default says from 50,100 to 50,149. That's where object numbers should be within this object, within this extension. But in our case, we want to just, we, we could change the numbers in the objects, uh, but we could also change the numbers here. So now that we, as soon as we save that, you can see this turned, um, brown, yellow, sunburst, something like that. Um, and it's no longer an arrow. Um, what I wanted to do here, so so what we had, you can see that this one extends the customer list. Um, so maybe we want to make this a bit cleaner. So, so we could start by you know, renaming the, the, the page extension. So say my customer list, for instance. Uh, we also have squiggly blue lines because, and this, this is kind of funny. Uh, uh, so in the future, you cannot, ha you cannot no longer use the uh, implicit uh, rec meaning that I'm here it just says name two. 
in the future, this will have to be rec.name2 to be proper. Uh, maybe Microsoft should generate code that way themselves. Uh, just, just a suggestion if anybody from LinkedIn is, uh, is watching. Um, the field name is also kind of funny. This is now name 217256. Um, so this is actually name two and then some a random number added to make this unique. We can just call it name two. Uh, uh, CTL, for instance. Um, so now this one looks almost nice. What I want to do also is that I would like to say customer list as the file name because then it's kind of nicer. So let me do this with the next one. So this would be my vendor list. And, and notice that I, I I don't change in in flight here. Uh, I actually use F2 to rename because if just if not in this case, there's no other thing that's referencing this page name. But if you're in, in an, a an extension with a lot of references, then by using rename your code that reference, this page will also be renamed. Um, and instead of that one, I'll, this is also named two. And I'll prefix the rec. So this is almost perfect. Let me change this to vendor list. And then we have item list. So I can do the same thing here. Oh, in this case, you can see there's actually two fields added. Uh, so I'll prefix with rec. And um, number two control and search description control. I'm going to save this and then say my item list. And the last one we had here is chart of accounts, so I'll do the exact same thing. My chart of accounts, prefix rec, change the name to without the crazy number, go back and change this one to chart of accounts. And, and let's say that, by the way, now that I'm in this, I remember I should have added one more field to chart of account. Then I can just now go in and say field, parentheses begin, and then now I press control space and I get um, the, the fields. Let's actually do this in a different way. Let's see that I want the other budget, uh, budgeted amount also. Budget at date, budget at amount, um, had an application area so everybody can see the field. Even here, I get this one will not prefix rec either. That's kind of, uh, yeah, I hope that comes soon. Anyway, so now we actually made a customization on top of our customization, something that would be complicated before uh, and resolve in multiple. Uh, extensions. Um, so, and we can try to build this one. Shift Control B. So this is perfect. So the only thing we need to do now is that we need to go back in here, and then we want to uninstall this thing. So one thing that's important to mention here is that what I'm doing, moving something over to another extension, only works for non-tables. So, so if you say, oh, we have built seven different extensions, let's merge them together because that would be easier to maintain. You cannot just move a, uh, a table object from... Um, from one extension to another. That is complicated uh, because the, 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 
if you have added a field uh, to chart of account, that field is bound to that specific extension. So if you add it in another uh, extension, they will become a field in that extension, and the value might uh, the value will not be transferred. Um, so let's see. I think that was the last one. It was down here. Uninstall this guy. Um, and then let's press a five to deploy this one. Uh, and of course, we are not allowed to deploy because something with credentials. So let's clear the credentials and try again. See if this works better. Oh, I'm sorry about the uh, the helmet hair. I've been skiing for most of today. Um, come on, Business Central, you can do this. So, what's important now is that the the proper way of moving forward from this point is, is of course to actually add the fields to to the, this extension but if you still do it the designer way there's no there's no nothing preventing you from uh, downloading more and adding to this one we i just started with a blank here but there's no nothing preventing you from 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 adding to this one. So if you have users that prefer to go to the design route and, and change the screen, you can have them do that. And then you download the source, add to this one, remove their extension and, and, and upload your own. This one is still deploying. is taking a long time come on Microsoft you can do this Sunday evening there we go and I can remove my download bar and we're on customer and we can see that I have named two and that was what was added to my customer list and if we go into extensions we can see now that there is not installed not installed not installed and then there is regain and the last one here is not installed either so to clean it up completely we could certainly go in at some point and and simply unpublish these these other ones then they're gone um but now we kind of regain control of of this and and make it easier to maintain and we know that all our stuff is sitting here in this extension uh and we have it in visual studio so we have opportunity to uh, uh to make more changes and to, to keep track of what we're doing so that was a, uh, a a tip for people, and and perhaps this is a great way to uh, to get your toes wet in working with customizations and 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 looking at what's happening. So you can you can make the changes in design, download them, and see what happens, and uh, and then use that as a basis of working further. There's also a way for you can actually. Uh, deploy the the designer from within Visual Studio and then get the uh, get the changes you make directly back into Visual Studio. If you want to me to do a video on that one, remember to subscribe and and let me know in the comments below if you want that. Then I'll make a video on that at some point. Until then, have a wonderful day. Oops, that was the microphone I bashed. See ya.